just snuggling with my dog Willie in bed. But uh, all right. So uh, now, as you can tell by the as you can tell by the title of the video, uh, today I'm talking about yet another canceled movie, and and today's canceled movie I'm gonna be talking about is the original version of Toy Story. So. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, uh, Toy Story, so, all right, let's talk about Toy Story. So, Toy Story, it was an, it was an iconic movie that it came out, uh, Toy Story, it came out in 1995, and it was the first ever computer animated movie, a CG computer animated movie, and Toy Story was such a, and Toy Story was such a huge hit at the, a Toy Story was such a massive hit, both critically and financially, that it kicked. Not only did it kick off, uh, not only did it kick off many. See, not only was Toy Story so huge that, not only was Toy Story so huge that it kicked off a whole franchise, but it also kicked off Pixar Studios, which Pixar, because of that, they produced many beloved classic movies. Like Pixar produced many classic beloved movies, like. Uh, you know, movies like, you know, movies like Finding Nemo, Monsters, Inc., The Incredibles, Up, Wally, -E, Ratatouille, Inside Out, you know, stuff like that. Like, Toy Story was had such a huge impact, and it was so beloved that it caused all those iconic movies to be made. However, that might not have happened because the original version of Toy Story was significantly significantly different from the film that ended up getting made. So, all right. So let's talk about what the original version of Toy Story would be like, and why this version did not get made. All right. Let's get into it. All right. When George Lucas began the uh, when George Lucas began the ambitious task of bringing Star Wars to life, he famously founded an entire visual effects studio industrial light and magic to create numerous effect shots needed for the film and while his team invented new techniques and technologies unfortunately a lot of that work was incredibly tedious such as the elaborate process of tracing over live action footage frame by frame to create the glowing effect around the lightsabers or building and then shooting each miniature spaceship separately before compositing them together manually to create the space dog fights during the Death Star trench run. However, Lucas wondered if using computers could streamline the process of reducing the time, labor, and money it took to produce these effects for the Empire Strike. For the Empire Strikes Back, he'd meet up with a company called Triple E, who created fully computer generated tests of X Wing fighters flying in formation and while lucas felt the technology wasn't advanced enough to achieve the level of realism he needed for the film ultimately deciding to stick with practical effects he he was convinced of the future potential of the technology and he decided to start a computer division of his own at lucasfilm to run it he'd recruit a group of computer scientists from the computer uh graphics lab at new york institute of technology who all had a shared team of creating the world's the world's first computer animated feature film meanwhile triple h would go on to create computer animated uh, effect shots for walt disney's tron opening then walt disney animator and future toy story director john lassiter to the possibilities offered by the emerging technology from emerging technology from here john lassiter would be inspired to make an animated feature film of the brave little toaster but used backgrounds that were entirely computer animated and choose and chose to do a short test film of where the wild things are to convince the higher upset disney to move forward with his plan unfortunately for john lassiter he unknowingly he unknowingly uh, circumvented one of the direct su superiors in his effort to get short test f to get the short test film made, angering them and ultimately resulting in his termination. 
He'd quickly land on his feet, however, at Lucasfilm's computer animation division as a team began uh, planning a short film cartoon called The Adventures of Andre and Wally B. John Lasseter intended to do the same thing he did with Where the Wild Things Are, test and computer animate the objects while traditionally using animated, anima animating the characters by hand. However, Ed Siller, the leader of the group and co-founder of Pixar, challenged Lasseter to animate the entire thing by computer. Hold on a sec. Uh, I got to do something quick. <sighs> Just give me a sec, guys. Sorry about that. I just had to do something quick. By computer, the result would be groundbreaking as it proved that computer animation could be used to create an entire film. Following this, John Lasseter and the Pixar team began working on visual effects sequences with, with him, where on Young Sherlock Holmes, they made the first computer-generated photorealistic animated character that became a knight. Composed developments from a glass-stained window. Unfortunately, following George Lucas's divorce after Return of the Jedi, the Pixar team worried that Lucas would sell off the division as he was in need of money, since he refused to give his ex-wife any of his companies, opting instead to give her cash, determined to stay determined to stay together in order to create the first ever computer animated movie. The Pixar team convinced Lucas to split off the division into its own company. To finance it, Lucas immediately began looking for investors. Uh, enter Steve Jobs, who had just left Apple and fell in love with Pixar, who were combining art and technology, which was his ethos at App Apple. However, Steve Jobs wasn't interested in investing in the company instead he wanted to buy it and while his offer was well below what george lucas was asking lucas immediately had no choice but to sell due to his divorce job's goal however wasn't to make movies but to sell pixar's image computer and their software to a mass market but to show off what their hardware and software could do Later, uh, would produce computer animated short films. One of them would be called Luxo Jr., based on the Luxo lamp, which we see in the Pix as the Pixar logo in some of the Pixar movies. John Lasseter had on his desk, which would eventually become the Pixar mascot. Luxo Jr. would screen that SIG graph, an annual computer graphics conference, to a standing ovation and eventually be nominated for an oscar and stuff like that so yeah uh that's kind of the uh, no we're, <laughs> we're not done with the video yet don't worry people but i was just giving a little bit i was just giving a little bit of you know history for like you know how some of the stuff happened before then before and soon we're gonna get to what the original script was like and because it was nominated for an Oscar, it convinced Steve Jobs to make new animate. Uh, because of that, it convinced Steve Jobs to make new animated shorts each year. Unfortunately, Pixar was losing money, forcing Jobs to continuously put his own money into the company to keep it afloat. Things got so bad by 1988 that Jobs was forced to make deep spending cuts and layoffs as the company teetered on collapse. Despite this, John Lasseter still requested $300,000 for a short film, leading a skeptical Steve Jobs to ask if there were any storyboards he could see. First, John La okay, so first John Lasseter would then walk Steve Jobs through a film about classic toys told from the perspective of a one a one-man band toy named Tiny who meets a baby that terrorizes him. Steve Jobs would agree to finance the short, 
Despite the company's financial struggles, the short film T Tiny Toy would go on to win an Oscar for Best Animated Short. The first computer-generated film to do so, establishing computer animation as a legitimate artistic medium. Meanwhile, over at Disney, new CEO Michael Eisner and head of film division Jeffrey Keenberg wanted to revive the company's once great but now fading animation department. After seeing Tiny Toy, they began. After seeing Tiny Toy, they began to recruit Laser John Lasseter, Lasseter to come back to Disney as director. However, uh. Lassiter, now loyal to Jobs, who had believed in him when nobody else did, refused, leading uh, Eisner to engage Pixar to make a computer-animated feature film for Disney inst inst instead, which Kinberg would oversee. Now, okay, so now, okay, now we're getting into the original script of Toy Story. And Kinberg would oversee the original pitch for Toy Story. Feature, uh, and so the original pitch for Toy Story would feature Tiny the Wind Up One Man Band toy from the Tin Short film. On a family vacation, his owner that sees Tiny get lost. So, so the Tiny toy vacation with his owner that sees Tiny get lost at a rest stop from there. He'd be found by a junk man who puts Tiny up for auction, where he meets and is sold with an old van, and is sold with an old ventriloquist dummy who would, who both would, who both hope to be brought home by a child so that they could be played with, but instead are brought by a collector who takes them home and places them in glass, glasses, and glass cases along with other toys together the toys decide to escape and after a series of adventures they they'd end up at the preschool which to them is like toy heaven because it's a place where they'll never learn to get lost and never get outgrown as every year new kids will come home and play with them now if any of that sounds familiar it's because several of those ideas would end up being reused for future toy story films like AI and the computer in Toy Story 2, or the daycare in Toy Story 3. As for why this story wasn't used for Toy Story, one is be uh, so one of the reasons the story was not used was because uh, uh, Disney's uh, Jeffrey Kinberg didn't like it, complaining that the two main characters' motivations were too similar and that being their shared desire not to be abandoned or forgotten, and to be played with by children instead, Kinberg suggested that they rewrite the movie as an odd cup. Uh, he decided they rewrite the movie as an odd uh, couple buddy film, you know, kind of like Lethal Weapon, and give the two main characters contrasting personalities. The revised pitch would be... Okay, so the revised pitch would more closely resemble the finished film as it would be about a toy getting a uh, tiny for his birthday, which replaces a ventriloquist dummy as a child's favorite toy. However, there is one major problem. It didn't make sense that an old-fashioned tiny tin toy would become a kid's new favorite toy. Forcing the team to come up with a toy that any boy would just ha die to have. And while a military action figure like G.I. Joe was uh, initially considered, they ultimately settled on a space-themed suit calling the character Lunar Larry. But at, uh, Lunar Larry was going to be the character's name. But after a while, uh, they felt it sounded too wacky, so the name was changed from Lunar Lightyear to, uh, to Morph. But that was even worse. Eventually, since it was a space toy, the writers would eventually take uh, the writers would eventually take inspiration from the second man to walk on the moon, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, and renamed the toy to Buzz Lightyear, which of course Buzz Lightyear was the name of the toy in you know the final film we got. So getting back to it, at this stage, 
Buzz's personality was radically different and more like uh, Dudley Dwight, a dim-witted but cheerful, heroic-like superhero who knew he was a toy, just like everyone else. It was Joss Whedon, however, who was brought in to help rewrite the script that came up with the brilliant idea to make Buzz an action figure who isn't aware that he's a toy and who takes his job as an uh, intergalactic space ranger. Seriously, uh, to voice Buzz, uh, to voice Buzz Lightyear, Pixar would... Uh, so inter this is where things get interesting. So to voice Buzz Lightyear, they wanted Billy... Cr so originally, uh, to voice Buzz Lightyear instead of Tim Allen, they wanted Billy Crystal to voice, uh, to voice Buzz Lightyear, but he turned them down, believing, uh, and the reason Billy Crystal turned them down is because he did not believe the film would be a huge hit due to its computer animation, which was still in its infancy. And after seeing the finished film, however, uh, Billy Crystal would call it the biggest mistake of his career. Regardless, uh, Billy Crystal felt he would not have been right as Buzz anyway, and that Tim Allen, who had come to voice the character, was fantastic. Which is funny because which is funny because later on, Billy Crystal would later, uh, because Billy Crystal would later, recidify his mistake of turning down Toy Story. Because after that, uh, funny enough, Billy Crystal, he eventually voiced Mike Wazowski in Monsters, Inc., which was another Pixar movie, of course. Uh, so, okay, so getting back to it, the change from Toy Story to Buzz would also have an effect on Pizza Planet, which originally had been envisioned as a miniature golf pizza place called Pizza Putt. But with uh, Buzz's strong desire to get home, it made sense to turn Pizza Hut into something that resembled a spaceport, which also led to the creation of the Crane game with the new iconic Green Widow Men. For the Ventriloquist dummy, it had been uh, for the Ventriloquist dummy, it had been evolved to look old fashioned with a top hat and tails so that it would look like a kid's favorite toy. Uh, John Lasseter also gave it a pull strain after being inspired by a Casper the Friendly Ghost doll that he had when he was a child. However, the character designed uh the character designer Bud Lucky Lucky suggested that Woody should be changed to a cowboy, which Lasseter loved because which Lasseter loved because of the contrast between Buzz and the new toy, representing the future in the frontier of space. And Woody, the old toy, representing the old west or the past. However, he remained a ventriloquist dummy for some time and towered over Buzz, whose character model was considerably smaller and also red instead of his now iconic white, purple, and green. So Woody's characterization was also written more like a classic cowboy. Eventually, they ditched the ventriloquist dummy aspect of the character as they felt Woody, uh, as they felt like, as they felt Woody looked sneaky and mean, while Buzz was given a green and purple color scheme after L Lasser and his wife's favorite colors. Do, uh, so, getting back to it, due to the success of the recent Disney animated hits like The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and several others, Disney wanted Toy Story to be a musical too. However, both Lasseter and Whedon were against this, with Whedon saying it would have been a really bad musical because it's a buddy movie about people who won't admit what they want, much less sing about it. Which, you know, like, after hearing them say something like that, I mean, here's the thing, like, all right, okay, here's my thing. Here's my thing, you know, don't get me wrong, Toy Story is a great movie, and the Disney Renaissance movies are good, but I don't, I don't think that approach would have worked with Toy Story, so I do agree, as much as a piece of crap that Joss Whedon is as a person, that's one thing he said I would have to agree with him on. So, getting back to it, so Joss Whedon and John Lasseter 
They want much less singing about it as a compromise. The animators that although the characters wouldn't sing, the movie would feature non ict songs that the characters would not be able to hear, but the audience would. With each one about the emotion of the characters at that moment in the film. Besides now, famous, you got a friend in me, uh, now, of course, besides the famous, you got a friend in me song that's played during the opening credits of the movie to establish the bond between Andy and Woody. Another song that was written for the film that would be used to a brilliant effect was during the sequence where, uh, was during the sequence where Buzz finally learns that he's a toy, which, uh, which would be said to be Randy Newman, which, would be said to be Randy Newman's uh, emotional ballad, I Will Go Sailing No More, perfectly capturing Buzz's devastation and, delus and delusionment. Now, writer Joss Whedon also wanted to include Barbie as the film's final act and have the doll scoop in and save both Woody and Buzz from Sid. However, Mattel, uh, Mattel you know, the creators of Barbie, objected to the idea and refused to license Barbie for the film, believing that girls who played with Barbie protected their own personalities uh, onto the doll, and thus worried that if you give Barbie a voice, an animator, you'd be creating a persona that might not align with every little girl's dreams and desires. Obviously, after the film's enormous success, Mattel seemed more willing to license the character for inclusion in the sequel because you know Barbie did eventually appear in uh in Toy Story 2 and 3 but getting back to it Pixar however would run into the same problem with Hasbro as the animators wanted to feature uh G.I. Joe in the movie uh too but after Hasbro discovered that Sid was gonna blow it up they refused leading the animators to pivot and change the toy to the uh, fictional combat Carl instead of the movie. Instead, in so instead, the movie originally opened with Andy and Woody watching a cartoon of the Buzz Lightyear TV show. However, the team worried that since the cartoon was so incredible, it wouldn't be believable. So Woody was Andy's favorite toy. As a result, the opening would be reworked to show Andy playing with his toys. However, the original opening uh, opening would be repurposed for the opening to the sequel with a Buzz Lightyear cartoon being changed into a Buzz Lightyear video game. In the return of financing Toy Story, Disney had creative control over the project, which made more sense considering at this point, Lasser had no experience writing feature films. And Disney had a track record of producing hits going back to 1937 with Snow White. Jeffrey Kinberg, who was overseeing the film on Disney's side, would reject most of Pixar's notes and ideas during the storyboard sessions and instead of give his own extensive notes, famously saying his role in the creative process, I may be a tyrant, but I'm usually right. However, in this case, Kinberg was wrong and almost destroyed the movie in an effort to make to make it appeal not only to children but adults too. He kept pushing for the film to have more edge, which result uh, which okay, which resulted in Woody's character becoming meaner and more jealous and unlikable with each new revision of the script. It got so bad that even Tom Hanks remarked that the character had been made into a real jerk. For example, in this version of the film, Woody throw yeah, no joke, in the original script of Toy Story, Woody throws Buzz Lightyear out of the window, whereas in the final version of the film, Buzz, so Buzz is, ac now, if you remember in the first Toy Story movie, Buzz is accidentally knocked out of the window, but in the original script, Woody was going to push him out of the window. Not only that, but when the toys confront... In the original script, but... Not only that, but when the toys confront Woody afterwards, he blows them off 
and remarks that it's a toy, eat toy world, before yelling at Slinky to get the other toys off the bed, and uh, be and be ratting him, and be ratting him when he doesn't eventually, uh, when he doesn't eventually, the other toys stand up to Woody and throw him out the window too, in what would become known as Black Friday. In knowing what would become known as Black Friday, Pixar would screen the first half of the film for Disney, who hated what they saw so much that they halted production. Afterwards, Ken Afterwards, Kinberg asked a colleague why the movie was so bad, leading to his colleague to remind him that it wasn't the movie Lasseter had set out to make, subtly suggesting that uh, Katzenberg's uh, meddling was to blame. While Disney tried forcing Pixar to lay off a significant portion of the staff and take over the film, Pixar refused and kicked uh, Katzenberg out of the creative process so that they could get a few weeks to rework the script, while Steve Jobs financed their efforts with his own money since Disney had halted production. The result was a film much closer to the final the uh, the final version uh, the the script rewritten was much closer to the film that we all know and love, but there are still some differences cut from the film. So one of the scenes from the original script cut out of the final film was a scene of, of Sid torturing Buzz Lightyear by spinning him around on an electric drill, as well as an extended scene of Sid interrogating Woody before smacking him across the room. The editor on the film felt audiences would love Woody and Buzz the uh, the film editor thought felt audiences would love uh, Woody and Buzz so much by this point in the film that that they would hate seeing uh, the two always treated like this. So he and so he cut the scene also different. Uh, so was of course was Buzz Lightyear's infamous line: "This isn't flying; it's falling with style," which. Uh, which originally was, uh, which originally was technically its gliding, but let's not ruin the moment. Until writer Pete Doctor piped up, uh, shouldn't he say? Shouldn't he say it's falling with style, uh, leaving uh, Lasser's face to lighten up, and offered a quick last-minute re-record of the dialogue. And finally, the ending was slightly different too with the film closing on an exterior shot of Andy's house to the sound of a new puppy this ending however fell flat with test uh this ending however felt uh fell flat with test audiences so disney ceo michael eisner suggested to Lasseter that the film should end with a shot of woody and buzz together uh reacting in shock to the news of Andy's new puppy while the film uh, while the film was being made, Steve Jobs considered selling Pixar, considering the company had been losing money since he bought it, combined with the fact that he had invested a small fortune into it to keep it afloat. But after watching Lasseter and the team's uh, final version for the film Toy Story to come to life, it made it, uh, it it made Steve Jobs realize that Pixar was on the verge of transforming the film was on the verge of transforming the film industry not only that but Eisner not to have uh, not to have to rely on Disney to finance their future films Steve Jobs decided to take Pixar public decided to take Pixar public one week after Toy Story premiered uh, gambling that the film should be a hit, that the film would be a hit, which it was, making Steve Jobs a billionaire. Still, almost none of this ever happened, as not only was Pixar close to shutting its doors numerous times over the years, but Toy Story almost turned out as a very different movie, which likely would not have been as successful as the one we all, uh, as the Toy Story, you know, as the movie we all know and love today. Uh, and it would not have been as successful as the one we got, nor led to the creation of countless computer animated films that have followed, which those include movies like The Incredibles, Ratatouille, WALL-E, uh, Monsters, Inc., Up, Finding Nemo, Inside Out, 
all these, uh, in a bug's life, all these critically acclaimed Pixar movies. So, yeah, uh, so, yeah, that was the original script to Toy Story. Now, so, I guess that now that I've covered the original script for Toy Story, I guess I should talk about my thoughts on this canceled movie, uh, so, w overall, what are my thoughts on this unmade version of the movie? Honestly, uh, what do I think of this canceled version of the movie? You know what? I'm, you know, you know what? I, I am glad that I am so glad that this version was canceled because now the reason that I'm glad that this version was canceled is because I, you know, I love the, uh, when it comes to the first Toy Story movie from 1995, I love it. It's a great movie. It, the first Toy Story movie is one of my favorite movies of all time, and and I and I have a feeling that if this version was made, and if I saw it as a kid, I have a feeling that this version would have scarred not only me, but a bunch of other kids and parents. So, at the end of the day, I'm glad that the original version was cancelled. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was the original script for Toy Story. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Cancelled Movies, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.